This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and have a look at a finance lease now, but from the lessor's perspective. So remember, the lessor is the person who has legal ownership. And under the conditions of a finance lease, the accounting treatment is that the lessee has the ownership, isn't it? So in substance, even though the lessee does not legally own it, we recognise an asset in the lessee's book. So in the lessor's books, what we need to do is we need to de-recognise that asset, don't we? So we're going to credit our property, plant and equipment. And then the other side is to recognise a debit entry. And that debit entry is going to be a receivable, OK, because you've leased the asset to somebody else. You are contractually obliged to receive cash from your customer, so from the lessee, and that gives rise to an asset which effectively is a receivable. The issue is what we're going to record that receivable at. De-recognising the asset is quite simple. You just credit the property, plant and equipment, but the debit is a little bit technical. What we do there to record that receivable is we look at it at what's referred to as the net investment in the lease. OK, what on earth is all that about? Well, if you have a look at the bottom, just underneath it defines the terms for us. Uh, the net investment in the lease. Remember, we're always thinking about present value terms. Uh, so the net investment in the lease is the gross investment in the lease discounted the implied implicit rate. So we need to do some discounting uh, and some discounting to the gross investment in the lease. Well, the gross investment in the lease essentially is all the future cash flows. So you can see that it's any minimum lease payments that you are due to receive. They need to be discounted back to present value plus what's referred to as any unguaranteed residual value because when that asset comes back to you it will have a residual value won't it so even though no physical cash comes in that's the the, the value that, that is coming back to you so although it's not a cash flow it, it's value that's coming back into the business isn't it so we need to discount it back to present value okay however we don't just focus on the actual residual value we focus on the unguaranteed amount so if we know what the residual value of the asset is likely to be, we will ensure that the lessee has to guarantee some of it back to us to, to cover the risk, if you like, that it, it's obsolete, that the asset is worn and the fact that it may be damaged. What we need to look at is the unguaranteed amount, OK, because the guaranteed amount is going to come back into our books anyway, regardless. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. What about the bit that is unguaranteed? OK, yeah. What happens if the asset comes back into our books and, and, and it's not worth as much as what we expected? What bit is not guaranteed to us? So if we had a, an estimated value of, say, 2000 and that the lessee was guaranteed with 1600, the unguaranteed residual value is the difference, which is there the 400. And it's the 400 that is the gross investment in the lease, because that 400 difference, if you like, is an investment that we are making in this lease to, to, to get the full value of the asset back in however many years time. OK, so that's where it gets complicated in the fact that one, we need to discount back the cash receipts to present value. And as well as that, we also need to discount back the unguaranteed residual value. OK, so it gets quite tricky. OK. But once you've done one or two questions, you, you should be reasonably OK. Uh, if there is any difference between the value of the asset and the amount that you record as a receivable, that goes immediately to profit or loss. So you're crediting the PPE, you're debiting the receivable with the net investment in the lease and any difference goes to profit or loss. Uh, in an ideal world, they will both be equal, but that may not be the case. Uh, you then go through and record the cash receipt. So you debit bank, credit the receivable. And again, you've got interest, the rate implicit on the lease, you record the interest income. So I think that's quite important. It's not an interest expense, is it? But it's interest income. Uh, there's only three steps because there isn't another step, is there? Because we no longer have the assets, so we do not need to depreciate, do we? If you're curious as to why there was four steps for the lessee and three for the lessor, 
then that's the reason. Okay, the asset's gone, so there's no longer any need to depreciate that asset. Okay, that's it. It's the numbers bit that then gets that ever so slightly more complicated. So let's go through there and have a play around with it with the example. Uh, it says there, calculate Cherry's net investment in the lease. So to work out the net investment in the lease, you need to work out the gross investments of the minimum lease payments and any unguaranteed residual value and discount it back to present value. That's where you just need to be careful in terms of the discounting and, and what periods the cash flows need to be discounted back by. We'll worry about that in a moment. Uh, showing the guaranteed and the unguaranteed amounts. Okay, so I'm not too worried about the, the future treatment. It's all about the initial recognition. So it says, Cherry leases out an item of property, plant and equipment under a five-year finance lease. Okay. Uh, the lease commenced on the 1st of January and the rate implicit is the 4%. So that's what we'll use to do the discounting back. The annual lease rent, well, oh, put my teeth back in. Uh, the annual lease rentals of $5,000 are paid at the start of the lease period. So that's going to be very, very, very important because if it's a five year lease, the first lease payment due to us is at T0. Uh, so T0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the five payments, okay? Yeah, and it's there over from T0 to 4. So you need to be very careful. Yeah, it's not T1 to 5. That would be if they were in arrears because it's in advance. It's T0 to 4, okay? Vitally important. Uh, Cherry estimates that the residual value of the item of property, plant and equipment is 2,000. The guaranteed amount is 1,600. So the guaranteed amount... Uh, oh, careful, wrong way. The guaranteed amount is 1600. The unguaranteed amount is 400, isn't it? Being the difference between the 2000 and the 1600, and it's that 400 that needs to be discounted back, discounted back from the end of the lease. So, is that there at T5? Boy, oh boy, there's a lot that we need to consider. So Let's go through that. Have a look at the year. Uh, so T0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The unguaranteed is there is it as 500. And then for the first, was it five periods? It's at 5,000, isn't it? So the payments are made in advance. So it's the 5,000 from T0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Uh, the discount factor is that there at 4%. Double check it correct. It's there at 4%. So at T0, it is 1, isn't it? And to work out a discount factor, remember, it's uh, 1 over 1 plus R being the discount rate to the power of N. So in the first year, it's 1 divided by 1.04. So is that there as 0 0.962? Uh, is that the 0.925? Uh, 0.889, uh, 0.855, and is it the 0.822, which gives me, is it a present value, so is that 5,000, uh, T0, 5,000, Multiplied by 0 0.962. Uh, does that give me 4810? 5000 times 0 0.925 is 4625. Uh, is that 4, double 4, 5? Uh, And is that three two nine? Uh, so if I total those up, five thousand plus four eight ten plus four six two five plus four 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 five 
plus 4275 plus 329 gives me there is that 23484. That figure there is the net investment in the lease. Okay, the gross investment in the lease is just the total of the cash. So five lots of five thousand and the unguaranteed residual value at four thousand. So five five twenty five. That's twenty five thousand four hundred. But here, that two three four eight four. That's what we refer to as the net investment in the lease. So that will be your starting point. So you debit. Uh, your receivable with the 23484. Okay, uh, that was all that was required uh, within the question. They wanted us to work out the net investment in the lease showing the guaranteed and unguaranteed amounts. Uh, so we've done that. Just as a little bonus, just so you know how to, to apply it in case the question took it any further. Uh, so we would look at the year. So year one, you've got your brought forward receivable at 23484. Uh, you've then got your cash receipt because things were done were they in advance uh, the cash receipt was it there as 5,000 uh, you would then have your outstanding balance so less the 5,000 does that give me 18,484 uh, the interest was there was it at four percent so that gives me 739 give me my carry forward figure is it there as 19223 okay uh, so again if you want to and if you're curious about the journal entries uh, here you get your cash receipt so you debit the bank and credit your receivable in terms of the interest that debits the receivable and credits your interest income okay so the interest income the credit there is on the statement of profit or loss and then the carry forward figure there is on the statement of financial position uh, I've gone a little bit further there than potentially what I needed to. Hopefully after the five years, it will all come down to zero. Don't worry about that. You're never going to have to do that within the exam. Just ensure that you're happy with the fundamental treatment of accounting for a finance lease in the lessors books. And I think the key bit there, isn't it, is that first step. Uh, you record the receivable at the net investment in the lease which takes the gross investment, which is looking at your minimum lease payment and any unguaranteed residual value and discounting them back to present value at the rate implicit in the lease. If you can do that, it's a little bit F9, isn't it? Even pushing towards P4, I think, but there you go. Uh, if you can do that, you're not going to go too far wrong in any exam question. Other than that, uh, that's leases. Uh, done uh, we'll go through in the next little session and start to look at sale and leaseback transactions so i'll see you all in a short while